The collapse surprised some, but according to the Wall Street Journal, there were red flags all over the place. Joining me now to talk about how things got went so wrong, Greg Zuckerman, a special writer at the Journal. Greg, it's good to have you on the news line today. And back in 2015, what were the issues? Yeah, and great to be here with you, Kelly. Again, so as long ago, as you suggest, 2015, FDIC regulators and others had identified issues, the growth, the dependence on one industry, the venture capital industry. Others were concerned about lack of risk management. And we delve into more recently the, the poor risk management. Your, your previous guests have talked about the questions of does this raise issues about the fractional reserve uh, banking industry? Uh, to me, it's a question of poor risk management, dependence on models that were really poor, and reassured them. They had models internally over the past year saying interest rates were unlikely to soar. Uh, garbage in, garbage out. That hmm. was, um, those were models that really undercut their operations. So their model said interest rates were unlikely to soar. At what point did they look at the Fed statement and go, well, you know, these dots are pointing to you know, a massive increase in the funds rate, and maybe now we need to hedge, or now we need to think about, you know, what, take us back to, so the first rate hike was January of 2022, Greg. What played out over the ensuing months as the Fed signaled and then began a series of steep hikes? Right. Well, well, as you know, there was an argument that the inflation issue wasn't something uh, endemic, that it was transitional, that, uh, yeah, there'd be higher rates, but it won't be something that they'd be raising aggressively. Um, you know, part of the issue is we in society and business have become overly dependent on models. I'm a big believer in models, some of the best investors and others, and companies have developed these models, but you also want to be careful about the information you uh, input into these models. And it seems as like the executives that we've reported in the story of SVB were a little bit beholden to models that were reassuring when they really should not have been. Wow. So real quickly then, uh, the lack of chief risk officer, Greg, some of these things, should this have been flagged higher up by the Fed and by supervisors? Was this a massive lapse on their part uh, not to push harder for the bank to rectify this? Yes, that was something obviously regulators should have identified, but also the fact that so many venture capital firms and companies had put so much of their money into this one bank. And frankly, they did it because they liked bankers at SVB. They were helpful. They knew the industry. But also, as we reported, there was another side to the bank where they pressured these borrowers. They said, unless you put all your money or the majority of your money in accounts here, we're not going to lend to you. Yeah. And as a result, so many people had so much money in these accounts that when things got rough, when there were questions raised, they got scared and oh. then there was a run. Absolutely. Greg, with the great TikTok, I encourage everyone to read the piece. And thank you for joining us today.